Hello, and welcome back to Honey Bees and Beekeeping, A Year in the Life of an Apiary. I'm Dr. Keith Delaplane, Extension Entomologist and Honey Bee Specialist at the University of Georgia. Our beehives are still in the mountains, hopefully making us a big honey crop. So this is a good time to go over other topics in beekeeping that aren't necessarily tied to our honey production schedule. In the last show, we visited a commercial queen and package bee producer. In this show, we go over parasites, pests, and diseases of honeybees. Honeybees are attacked by bacteria, viruses, protozoans, fungi, and parasitic mites. Plus, bee equipment is attacked by other insects. Controlling these diseases and pests requires constant vigilance by a beekeeper. Most state departments of agriculture have apiary inspection programs and require all hives to be registered. In this manner, states can routinely inspect hives and regulate their movement in the event of epidemic disease or pest outbreak. Most mail-order packages and queens have health certificates from originating states that assure buyers of healthy bees. These services are only available if hives are registered. See your county extension agent for help in registering and inspecting your hives. However, don't rely on inspectors or anyone else to alert you to health problems in your hives. Know the health situation in your hives. Learn the symptoms of the major bee health problems and always be on the lookout for them. Disease and pest control is a big topic in beekeeping and we can only go over the major points here. American Fowl Brood, European Fowl Brood, Nozena, Chalk Brood, Sac Brood, Wax Moths, Tracheal Mites, Varroa Mites, and Queenlessness. My companion book for this video series covers disease and pest control in greater detail. American Fowl Brood, or AFB, is the most serious disease to infect any honeybee colony. It is caused by the bacterium Bacillus larvae, which forms infective spores that persist in honey and equipment for at least 35 years. The disease spreads when spores are transported on drifting bees, hive parts, clothing, hive tools, or contaminated honey. Every beekeeper should learn to identify AFB symptoms. First, as you open a hive with AFB, you may smell a foul, glue pot odor from the decaying brood. Brood killed by AFB are usually capped, and the cappings are sunken inward and perforated. At first, the dead larva or pupa is dull white, then progresses from tan to brown to black as it decays. Perhaps the best symptom is brood ropiness, if you find a suspicious cell of brood, insert a small stick in the cell, mix up the contents, and withdraw the stick. Brood killed by AFB will be stringy and rope out up to one inch. In later stages, dead brood dry down to individual scales, each containing billions of spores. Check for scales by holding the comb so that sunlight reaches into cells. Anytime you handle an AFB colony, clean up carefully to prevent contaminating other colonies with spores. First, heat sterilize your hive tool with a smoker before you leave the site. Back inside, wash any article that touched infected bees or equipment. Most of all, wash your hands. Good AFB management centers around prevention. Teramycin is the only drug approved in the U.S. for preventing AFB. Feed teramycin in spring and fall and never within four weeks of a marketable nectar flow. The objective is to kill bacteria in the vegetative stage before they form resistant spores. This is the treatment we gave our bees when we installed them in the hives. Because the infected spores are so abundant, resilient, and long-lived, AFB is practically impossible to cure. For this reason, 
Most states burn AFB-infected colonies. This is the surest and cheapest way to eliminate this disease. European foul brood, or EFB, is caused by the bacterium Melisococcus pluton. Larvae are often infected with other bacteria too, such as Bacillus alvei. So EFB may actually be a complex of several diseases. Its symptoms are often confused with American foul brood, but it is much less serious and often curable. Therefore, it's important for a beekeeper to be able to distinguish between the two. Larvae are infected during the first two days after hatching, when they eat food contaminated with the EFB bacterium. As long as bees can clean out dead and infected larvae, the disease usually goes away on its own. The EFB bacterium does not form long-lived spores, like with AFB, but it can persist in contaminated material. Larvae with EFB usually die before they are capped, and still in the coiled stage. They are yellow-colored, progressing to brown, at which point their white tracheal tubes show through the skin. The dead larvae are only slightly ropey when you mix them up with a stick. EFB is prevented by following the same medication regimen recommended for AFB. Feed teramycin in autumn and early spring. To treat a colony with EFB, Give it a frame of young brood from another colony and feed one-to-one -one sugar syrup. Nozema is a disease of adult bees caused by the protozoan Nozema apis. It rarely kills a colony outright, but causes slow population growth in spring, low honey production, high incidence of queenlessness, and, probably, numerous secondary illnesses. The disease begins when adult bees eat spores of Nozema apis, which germinate in the gut. The vegetative stage of the protozoan invades cells lining the gut wall, disrupting normal digestion. Nozema is best prevented by feeding bees Fumadil B in sugar syrup in autumn and spring. Protect hives from direct wind and keep them away from low spots in your yard that collect cool, humid air. Only a microscopic examination can confirm Nozema disease. Your county extension agent, bee inspector, or local bee association can help you find a diagnostic service.